Welcome back to my channel, everybody. I like to call this segment quarantine and chill because today is just going to be a chill video. Well, I'm assuming you are hopefully in quarantine because if you're not, then you're jeopardizing all of us. Um, anyways, yeah, so in today's video, I'm going to be talking up to you guys about all of my tattoos and I'm going to go through each and every single one of them and tell you guys the background, the order that I got them in, what inspired the tattoo, who did the tattoo, how long the tattoo took, how much it cost, all your questions you could possibly have for me about tattoos, I will be answering. What the hell? I'm sorry, I thought both of my dogs were in my room and one of them just knocked on the door. So yeah, if y'all have ever been curious about getting a tattoo, you've been on the fence about it, you um, want a better understanding of how long it takes, how much they cost, um, keep watching. Alrighty, everybody. I'm having like a good little Ariana Grande hair moment today. Love it. Love it. Okay, so I'm going to be talking to you guys about my tattoos. Um, but before I do that, I gotta put some more lip gloss on. Mm hmm This is the Jeffree Star X Morphe lip gloss in the shade Star Crown. Anyways, so back to the, back to the video. I'm gonna start with my very first tattoo. Obviously, I was 18 years old, and that's not it. This was my this was my very first tattoo. Um, I got it when I was 18 years old, and I remember I had a like. I was super broke actually. I was living at the dorms at UTB and I had a Tumblr at the time and I was always on Tumblr looking up super cool, like hippie-ish tattoos. I had a super hippie ass boyfriend at the time. So I guess part of me wanted to kind of impress him at the same time, get a tattoo because I was a young little rebel. So the meaning behind this one is I was at the time getting my degree in biology and it's kind of like a flower with an electron cloud in the middle. I love nature and I love science so I wanted to put the two together and I thought that was a perfect way to do so. So yeah, this was my very first tattoo. It took two and a half hours and I believe it cost $120 and I got it in Brownsville by Raul. He's a very well-known tattoo artist in South Padre Island, but at the time he had a shop in Brownsville. So that was my very first tattoo and I'll never forget it. I don't remember it being so painful. I remember I was anticipating it hurting a lot more than it actually did. But I remember towards the end after the sec after like the second hour when he was doing the shading, that's when the pain really kicked in because your skin is just like so tender and yeah, so on a scale of 1 to 10, it hurt like around a 4 towards the end of 6. So moving on to my next tattoo, I was um, 19 years old, I believe, or I could have been 18. It was like the summer immediately after this, so this was like um, the second semester of my junior year of college, which would have been like a regular person's freshman year if you graduated 2013. So I guess it was 2014? 15? I don't know. It's all kind of a blur, you know? Anyway, so this was my next tattoo. This one is probably one of my least favorite tattoos. No tea, no shade. It's just something that was thought of like this guy posted. I'm practicing tattoos. Can somebody let me do like a rose or something on them? And I was just like bored as hell. I was like grounded the whole summer and just super bored. Yeah, who gets grounded at 19, right? I don't know. But yeah, I was super bored and I was just like, you know what, F it, like I'll, I'll do it. So I messaged him and I was like, it was actually supposed to be like a skull with a, f like a skull coming out of a rose, but I didn't want the skull because that wasn't really my vibe back then. So I just ended up getting the rose. This took forever because the guy was learning. That's why it took so long. It took way longer than it actually should have taken and it's faded quite a bit since then. Um, I'm just not crazy about it, but I don't think I'll remove it because it's not like ugly or anything. This one was actually free because he was practicing and it took forever. So yeah, that was my second tattoo. Uh, I don't regret it, I don't regret any of them, but if I could go back, I probably would have waited and gotten something a little better. 
or just not gotten color because this color faded so fast but that's the only bad thing i have to say about that tattoo my third tattoo i got when i was definitely 19 and it's a matching tattoo that i have with my older cousin samantha we both um have always shared like a love for the ocean and the beach we're basically grew up on the beach and when she moved away for a while when she moved back we would have beach dates and every weekend she would pick me up we would get there used to be a taco bell on the island we would get five layer burritos go sit on the beach and just talk about everything for hours so that was like our escape our getaway so we ended up getting these matching tattoos it's a wave and a heartbeat and the same artist who did this tattoo did this tattoo as well and this one i believe cost 40 bucks it was supposed to be like 80 dollars um each but we only had like 80 dollars total <laughs> so i remember telling him like hey hook us up bro like what the hell so they ended up like doing like 40 dollars each so that was pretty cool then my next tattoo was this tattoo right here it's like a beautiful little hibiscus type thing going on in a square with like the the petals on the sides it's very detailed and here's like the stem goes along through here and over this way I love the shading on this one I love the detailing on this one this was from um, my buddy Nestor he did this from a shop in Los Fresnos this tattoo took roughly seven hours I remember I drove back from Austin and it was around my birthday and my sister was like, hey, I got you a gift. And I was like, what's my gift? And she was like, well, come pick me up. So we both got tattoos that day. That was, this was my 20th birthday gift from my sister to me. And I love it so much. It's one of my favorite tattoos. It didn't hurt. This area doesn't really hurt, but um, these petals coming closer to this ditch area, that hurt. That was like the most painful. So on a scale of one to 10, I would say this one was like, a five and then towards the end a six so then my next tattoo ladies and gentle dudes was um i don't know if you can separate this one from this one they actually don't go together at all is this little death moth right here if you look carefully you could see the two eyes and this the skull like the teeth skull there's like eyes in the in the wings and teeth in the wings and this i got when i was 20 and I was living in San Marcos and I was making a lot of money at the time and I just wanted to spend the money as fast as I was making it. And this had been a drawing that I stumbled upon back in high school and I saved it in my phone forever. And one day I was like, I'm ready. Like I've saved this in my phone forever. You know, if I wanted to get this tattoo or not. And it's been so many years since high school, I think I want to get it. So I went ahead and got it. So. I'll try to find pictures to throw in as I was getting these tattoos. <sighs> yeah, there's no pictures. So if you can imagine, it was only like these three tattoos down here, like these three right here, and then this. So all of this in between was completely bare. It was really cool though. A lot of people would give me compliments on the placement because the placement of this, this was before this too. So it was just here. So imagine just having like a little diagonal death moth here. It was super sick. I loved it. This tattoo I got at Tattoo Emporium in San Marcos on uh, the square. I don't remember the artist's name, but it only took him an hour. And he charges $120 an hour. So since it only took an hour, it was $120. Uh, plus a tip. So if you've never gotten a tattoo, it's considered like a service, you know? So you don't just pay for the tattoo because... When you just pay for the tattoo, the artist doesn't get all of the money. They get a cut of the money, so it's very custom to tip. And I basically tip off of how many hours they go or just how much it costs. So on this $120 tattoo, I probably tipped him like 50 or 60 bucks. So yeah. Next, we have this guy right here. And a lot of people ask me, what is this? It's kind of hard to tell what it is right off the bat, but it is a zombie holding an eight ball. Actually, I could show you exactly what it is. One second. This is what it is. It is a zombie hand holding an eight ball. The significance of this one is, um, this was the stick shift in Josh's car when I met him and the year that I got this tattoo, him and I had gotten 
so close we've gotten so much closer than ever before and he actually taught me how to drive standard and he actually also taught me how to play pool and i am actually very good at playing pool now i'm a skill level four out of eight skill levels so i think that's pretty cool if you put into perspective josh's skill level five and he's freaking amazing like plays in state tournaments amazing so yeah, I would say I'm pretty good at pool, okay? He didn't only teach me how to drive standard or play pool, he also taught me like how to save my money, how to invest my money, how to grow up and be an adult and stop being such a child. Um, I learned so much from him that year, so I wanted to, you know, mark that with this as a little reminder of my appreciation for meeting him and getting to know him and growing up with him. Um, it's crazy, we're still together. He's still teaching me things every single day. It's ridiculous, I don't know what I would do without him, but yeah, that is the significance of this guy right here. This one was also done by a guy in San Marcos from the same shop, different guy, same price, same amount of time. So an hour and $120. I remember when I got this tattoo, I Josh was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why aren't you answering me? Like, why aren't you answering my FaceTime? And I was like, I don't want, oh, I was like making something up, like, you know, and he was like, I know you're lying, what's going on? And I was like, I don't want to tell you, you're going to think I'm obsessed with you, because we had just been dating for like a couple of months, I think, but we had known each other for years. Um, and he was like, what is it? Just tell me. And I was like, well, I got a tattoo. And he was like, of what? And then I sent him a picture and he was like, oh my god he was like i love it so much oh my god thank you like i can't believe you got this and i remember when i got back home because i was in san marcos so when i got back to the island he was showing everybody he'd be like hey look and he'd grab my arm and be like hey look do you recognize that and he'd be like hey look so that was super cute so yeah that's the story of my little eight ball next tattoo is this one it is purely design and this is purely art like there's not really any significance behind this other than I needed to fill in the space between um, here and down here. So I got this one and this was also done by Nestor, the same guy who did this one. Um, I don't remember the price of this one. I think it was around like one, no, this one was more expensive. This one was like four something. No, was it? I don't remember the price of this one, but it took forever. It took like six hours and it hurt so bad it's on the elbow and this is like one of the worst places to get a tattoo as you can see it fades significantly here it's really faded here and that's gonna happen it doesn't matter who the artist is it's gonna happen um so yeah this hurts so so badly i don't know how it's not even finished it's missing a lot of shading but i couldn't take the pain so after the sixth hour, I tapped out and I just haven't gone back ever since, but I think it still looks pretty badass, so I don't see a need to go back anytime soon. Um, I forgot to mention, this one was probably one of the most painful tattoos on my body. Um, the shading and everything, this area is so extremely sensitive that it hurts so bad. And I remember going in there like, oh, I already have like four tattoos, I'm chilling. So I'm just like chilling, right? And then he starts and then after a while like after 30 minutes i'm like hey it hurts a lot and he was like oh i thought you were badass coming in here wanting to get a tattoo on your ditch i he's like you didn't know it's gonna hurt and i was like no i had no idea it was gonna hurt he's like girl this is like the most painful area of your whole body and i was like oh great just my look so i had to suck it up for like an hour non-stop pain especially the shading area the shading portion was the worst it was so bad so, um, after that one, let me think, what did I get next? Okay, so next I got this one. So the funny thing about this one is that everybody will tell you if you're going to get a big piece like this, you start here and then you work your way down. But I did everything backwards. I started from the bottom to the top and it was kind of very difficult, like fitting everything into place. And it was really difficult for the artists as well because a lot of artists didn't want to cover up anybody else's work. That was like the big underlying issue that I had when doing my sleeve was a lot of artists didn't want to go over any of the other artists' stuff. They all wanted their own space, you know, to shine. That's how it is when you're dealing with tattoo artists. Some of them can be very prideful and some of them will even tell you like, I don't want to add anything to your arm because I don't like anything on there. Like straight up, people will tell you that. So you got to be really careful about who you choose and whatnot. 
So this one was a super cool guy in Mercedes. His name was Shorty. He did my sister's piece. So I went to him for the similar piece. All three of my sisters, or I have three sisters, two of them and myself, we all have um, similar pieces on our left arms. So that's super cool. And the same guy did all three of them. So this is probably one of my most meaningful tattoos. It's something that I wanted since I was like 19 years old. This tattoo is, she's a bride and it's like one of those old school like picture frames, you know, the old school picture frames that the brides are in and they're dressed, you know, very classy with their earrings and their pearls. She has pearls right here and her earrings and her necklace, her pearl necklace, but she's a bride, but she's dead. She's, as you can see, she's like half dead because there was like a point in time where I thought love was dead. I don't think love is dead, but I don't think love is what it used to be. In the old days, people would marry for life and divorce wasn't a thing. And then just throughout my life, um, you know, I experienced so many heartbreaks. A lot of women around me experienced heartbreaks in my immediate family. Um, my parents aren't divorced, but divorce was like a common thing in my family and it just always ended so terribly for everybody involved, like the couples involved, the kids involved. And um, just like when my grandma passed away, um, I feel like, I don't know if I'm getting too personal here. <laughs> it was just like a moment in time where I feel like love isn't what it used to be. And I still don't think love is what it used to be. But yeah, it's just like a weird subject because there's so many underlying factors that led to this tattoo. But um, I'm not at the point where I want to openly share all of that because other people are involved and I don't think they would want all of that out there. But I am very blessed and lucky to have experienced it again. And it's so great. And even if you don't experience love from a significant other, you're so lucky if you have a mother and a father or an aunt and an uncle or a cousin or a grandma or grandpa who love you or a friend that loves you i love you if you're able to experience love from anybody consider yourself so lucky love doesn't need to come from a boyfriend or a girlfriend um i've also learned that over the years the love of my family literally it carries me through all the hard times ever so enough of the sappy sap next tattoo <laughs> my next tattoo and one of my final tattoos i knew it looked crooked it looks crooked right now but the artist insisted that it's not i don't know i feel like it might be this one was also to just cover like fill in space um it's another tribal tattoo kind of goes with the flow of this one this one didn't hurt very much, just like getting on the knuckles and a little bit on the hand. The artist, um, the artist's name is Sam Lee. He is another great artist in South Padre. This one costs about $300. Well, I got two of them and I guess I got the homie hookup. So it costs about $300 and he did both of them in like an hour and a half. So super great work. Didn't really hurt. I forgot to mention this one cost $400 and it took nine hours, one session of six hours, one session of three hours. Another thing you have to take into consideration is your tattoo artist, if they work fast, if they work slow. I feel like the longer sessions that I've had throughout this um, video, the artists are extremely heavy handed, meaning they are really heavy handed and that tends to hurt a lot. And usually when they're heavy handed, they also take a lot longer in my opinion, what I've noticed. So yeah, that's another thing to take into consideration. And if you don't know right off the bat, if they're heavy handed, read their reviews on Yelp, ask somebody who's gotten a tattoo from them, you'll be sure to find out. And my last and one of my most favorite tattoos is this little guy right here. It's a worm, I'm gonna zoom in. It's a worm and a beanie, wearing a beanie. And that is, my sister's name is Journey. Her name's Journey, but everybody calls her Journey. Then Journey turns into Jerns, and Jern rhymes with worm, so people call her Young Worm or Big Worm or Low Worm, like 
warmed is what people call her. That's what I call her. So I got a little warm with a beanie. I was going to get it smoking a joint, but I don't want my parents to freak out, which they totally would have if I did, even though I'm a grown ass woman. Um, I still have respect for them. So yeah, she is my favorite person. Like literally, she's literally one of my favorite people on this planet. I don't know what I would do without her. She's my heart and soul. I would, I don't know what there is that I wouldn't do for her. I love my sister. That's the story behind that one. That tattoo was the one also done by Sam Lee. Um, cost $300 for both, but I think I got the homie hookup. It's usually more expensive than that. So I would say all together, I paid I don't know, probably fifteen hundred, a thousand, over a thousand for sure, on my whole sleeve. And the thing about my tattoos is like, I did them like all sporadically, so I had a lot of space to work with. I didn't do like a whole big piece, obviously. But if I were to give you guys any advice on starting a sleeve, I would say start from the top to bottom and also get big pieces so it all flows really well and cohesively. Um, I don't mind my tattoos, they're like stickers because there's a lot of like space in between them. I actually prefer that now um, over just having like your full body like painted over. I don't know, that's just the way that I like it now. And I guess it's because it's the way that I did it. I love every single one of my tattoos. I don't regret a single one. Um, if I had to pick a favorite, it would probably be my worm and my girl. Call her my girl. I love her. I love that tattoo so much. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it on this video. I want to shout out Lane Dixon. I don't know if I said your name properly, L-E-H-N Dixon. I want to shout you out for giving me this video idea in the comments. So if you guys want to see any other types of videos, it doesn't have to be makeup related, just uh, shoot me a suggestion in the comments just like she did and I'll be more than happy to make that video. This video is actually super chill, didn't have to rehearse anything, didn't have to practice a look or anything, just literally sat down and told you guys the truth and nothing but the truth is what you'll get on this channel until next time guys adios